Hi, I'm Dawson Huss with the Diversity Consortium. I recently sat down with John Fitzgerald, Paul Duane, and Roger Peterson to ask them about the challenges facing individuals who are trying to navigate their way through the healthcare industry. I wanted to find out just why is it so expensive and complicated for people to find good health care for themselves? Hi, I'm John Fitzgerald. I'm a physician and uh, have been for uh, a little more than four years, uh, 40 years, that's four zero. Uh, and I am a primary care physician and I continue to practice. Within the United States, the value of the health care that we, we have is, is actually uh, low. And by that, I mean the quality is, uh, is not nearly as good as it should be, and the costs are much higher. And, and so poor, poor value. Our outcomes are not as good as many industrialized nations, and our costs are higher than all of them. And so if you look at their populations, the rate of development of chronic conditions, the outcomes of chronic conditions are are much better than in the U.S. because they take uh, invest uh, considerable resources in in preventing uh, those those issues or those conditions from arising in the first place, and that's done in the primary care setting. My name is Paul Duane. Um, I am a healthcare finance administ worked in healthcare finance administration for thirty plus years. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous what people pay for health insurance in America, but what it really is, it's the largest hidden tax in the history of mankind. It's just there's no hidden tax that's any bigger than the added um, cost on health insurance premiums to cover the loss on Medicare, the loss on Medicaid, the cost of the commercially insured, the fact that you get paid nothing for the uninsured, and then a reasonable return on the, the care they're actually providing to working individuals. I mean, it's that's killing the healthcare delivery system. Well, my name is Roger Peterson. Uh, I've been involved really in the healthcare industry since 2016, uh, both as a service provider and a consultant. For somebody that's not experienced in what's out there, they can they can go sideways quickly. Yeah, there, I mean, there are there are some new solutions that are that can be very helpful. Uh, and what that means is it's even more complicated, I think, for people to figure out what to do in these different scenarios. So are you saying that navigating all of these insurance options and healthcare providers out there, would you say that's challenging and confusing for most people? I'd say navigating the system is very challenging. Uh, patients often visit with a myriad of uh, specialists and generalists sometimes covered by a variety of insurance programs. And, and to make matters worse, many of the patients with the greatest need have the least ability to understand and navigate these arrangements. I've seen that firsthand with my parents. Uh, I've experienced firsthand myself. How would you say we help these people? What's the solution to helping people navigate the healthcare network? So um, a health system would look at how could I get some type of management around those people to keep them from walking into the most expensive place in in the system? And by giving them someone to call, a relationship, a medical home, people are more apt to call their primary care office, right? Um, or send it an email or text or call them um, to get an answer to their question. Uh, you kind of need a some kind of a a uh, primary care giver who really does understand your personal situation to help you monitor um, and navigate what you should do in certain environments. You create direct primary care systems to identify people that prevents them from getting into a serious episode of care in the first place, and then take, take that money and if you will put it in somebody's pocket someplace or reinvest it in something else in healthcare. So I've heard of direct primary care before. That's a it's a healthcare model where like I pay a membership fee directly to my doctor and I don't need to pay any copays or insurance premiums to be seen, right? 
So uh, if that's true, how is direct primary care a better solution than the system we have now? I think the whole structure of the direct primary care practice allows uh, allows us to uh, to overcome uh, a lot of the shortcomings of uh, today's traditional practice. As a result, I think outcomes are better and um, and the costs are much lower. And that's what the data have shown as well. Lower costs, higher outcomes, higher patient satisfaction, and higher uh, physician satisfaction. It puts the joy back in medicine. Most primary care physicians uh, went into that discipline because they valued uh, rich interactions with patients, the uh, opportunity to get to really know individuals uh, on a personal basis and to be able to help care for them uh, and meet and, and meet their needs uh, on a more personal basis. Direct primary care allows us to do that and, and will we'll create, can create, does create uh, a much more fulfilling professional life for physicians. The, the monthly premium that they pay for access to this, it, it can save the health systems a lot of money and it can give people a lot of access at a very reasonable price.